Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of His Word and family. I want to thank each and every last one of you for being right back here with the Royal Family and family. Of course, we cannot go without saying this. I want to wish every king, every queen, every prince, and every princess, I want to wish you a wonderful, magnificent Sabbath. And once again, thank you for bringing us in with your brother this week. And family, I want to come to you and I want to ask for your help. One of our queens in Israel, Queen Valerie, she is going through a time where she needs the help of the family. Now, family, I have mentioned this on several occasions. When you give to our family, that the Most High will give back to you. And he will. And there's a couple of scriptures that I want to stand on here as I do this. You don't have to open your Bibles yet. I want to read this here to you. The first one I'm going to read, I want to read 1 John chapter 3 and verse 17. I want you to see this. But whoso hath this world's good... And seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion for him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? So the Most High is making this very clear. Wait a second. If you are able to give to your brother and sister, if you don't have any compassion, then you're not going to do that. But the Father is saying that if you do have compassion, then the love of God is in you. Now, I want to go also to Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Now, many of you may have heard this here in the Christian church so many times, right before they were passing out tithes, the tithing collection plates. I want to read this here. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. So the Most High is making this clear. If you help his sons and his daughters, that he's going to make sure that in your time of need, that is going to be put into your bosom. That the men, the people here of this earth is going to give unto you. Pressed down, shaken together and running over. Now that's talking about helping your brothers and your sisters that's in need. All right. So there is a GoFundMe that is available for Queen Valerie. It is in the description. Not now. You can't do it now. But after the Sabbath, family, I'm asking you to please help our sister out. And I thank you so, so much. Now, family. Woo! <laughs> Part two. Tonight, uh, let me get my drink in now. Mm -hmm. Part two is coming tonight. Now, last week, we kind of had to end it a little bit because we was deep in the subject of sexual sin, but we did not finish. So there's something I want to wrap up here when it comes to sexual sin. So family, please open your Bibles to the 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. And we are going to start this out with the book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 1. Oh, here we go, family. Oh, I'm telling you, oh, it's about to get popping up in here tonight. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and shew my people their transgression. And the house of Jacob, their sins. Woo! Family, family, family. So I got permission from the Most High, according to the word, that I am able to raise my voice and show our people our transgressions. And I'm going to do it like I always do it without a can of the world. Because I want to make sure that I am reaching out to each and every last one of my brothers and sisters that are struggling with things. And we're going to continue. We're picking it up on lust. And like I said last week, we are going to see what are some other things that are very lustful, things that you may not have even thought about. One in particular that I know that you didn't. I want to bring that out, but I'm going to save that one for last. All right. So we got to pick back up here on this sexual sin. So now I want to go to third John, please, family, open your Bibles. Third John chapter one and verse four. And I'm going to stress this again, family. Open 
your Bibles and read along with me. Don't take my word for anything. All right? I don't want you to take my word. I don't want you to take King Yagidian's word, King Marcus, King Yada, Queen Tanya, King Gino. I don't want you taking any of our words. I want you to look in the Bible and read it for yourself. And for every last one of my brothers and sisters that I just mentioned, I want to thank y'all in front of the whole family. I want to thank y'all for everything that you do, for putting out these lessons and making sure that our people get exactly what they need, family. And thank you once again. All right, family. So we are at 3 John. There's only one chapter. Go down to verse 4, please. Listen to this. I want you to hear this. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Now, do you understand what that's saying there? That's you. Knowing that you are in this truth, there is no greater joy. Even the angels rejoice when they know that you are repenting from the sins that you've committed. And in order to know what your sins are, you have to know the law. That's why we have to go through the book. Okay, so now with that one being there said, I want you now to first and foremost, you know what? No, no, no. I want to change it up a little bit. I want to, I want to get right into the action of this here. I want to get right into it. Family, I got a video for y'all already. <laughs> I already got a video for you. I'm not going to say anything about this video. All I'm going to say is that we are going to pick back up on sexual lust. Now, family, <laughs> without any further ado, Take a look at this. Hey, my beautiful people. What is up? What is good? What is lit? Welcome to another video where we will be talking about the shit that be going down and the shit that I've experienced in the VIP rooms. Honey, period. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for that in Jesus name. <sighs> I had to stop it. I'm sorry, family. I had to stop it. I know I interrupted. I had to stop it. Did you hear what she said? In Jesus' name. All right. Let's go back. I'm thankful. But let me get to the video. Let me start off by saying just on Saturday, the last day I worked, I worked on that ghetto ass strip club. I probably won't go back to that strip club because it's just too ghetto for me. I might go back though because it was fun. <laughs> but there is too it's too much hoeing going on in there. And it's too much roaching. Roaching is when money is thrown in the air and people just go up and grab it or they just try to start dancing or interfering with your customer. Like they really don't give up who child, like who baby. It's just it's not the place for me. I don't think I fit in at the trap. But I might go back because it is money up in that bitch. Um, but just on Saturday, in the dancing, in the dancing area, in the dancing area, a guy pulled out his bare pity whacker. His bare pity whacker. While I was dancing on him, he pulled it out and thought I was going to continue to dance. I got up so fast. And he hurried up and tried to put his dick in his pants and started laughing. And everybody was looking at him. And I'm just like, what is wrong with you? Like, what is wrong with you, honey? That is not okay. That is not cool. Um, and then, and then another customer on Saturday, I had to give him a VIP dance. I did not want to give him a VIP dance because in VIP, you have to get fully naked. And I didn't want to give him a VIP dance, but I had to because it was towards closing time and they were cleaning up the red zone area, which is where we dance at. So we had to go to the VIP area to dance. Y'all, he was trying to suck on my titties. Isn't that fucking weird? And that's like the fourth 
customer, I kid you not, that is like the fourth customer that has tried that shit. I kid you not. Another customer tried that shit in Jacksonville. I think at both clubs I work. I think every time I fucking go on VIP <laughs> with a weirdo, really, they try to do that shit. I think I'm gonna really just stop giving out VIP dances because that is weird. That's weird. That's weird that I've had more guys try to do it than more guys try not to do it. No, that's not okay. Not okay. <laughs> now, the absolute sheer ridiculousness of how this whore, and you can't call it anything else but what she is, this whore. For one, I want to bring forth her appearance. Did you notice her eyelids, number one? But do you see how this woman, at first glance, does not look like your typical stripper? And she doesn't. Let's just say if you were to see her in a head wrap and a nice dress, skirt, whatever, would the stripper be the first thing to come to your mind when you look at her? Maybe the eyelashes, yes. The eyelashes should be a, should be a dead giveaway. But let's remove the eyelashes, right? And you just saw this young lady. I'm pointing this out here because there's a lot of our sisters that have the appearance of righteousness but a bunch of damn devils and likewise for our kings and princes as well they have the appearance of righteousness but are a bunch of devils i still can't get over the whole fact that this woman went ahead and used christ's name Jesus. And then led into that. Do you see how sick our people are? How screwed and how demented our people truly, truly are. That is absolute insanity. So now let's go ahead and get these scriptures. I want you to please go to Deuteronomy chapter 23. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 23 Let's go down to verse 17 Now Pay very very close attention To what the most high God of Israel said About his daughters There shall be No whore Of the daughters of Israel Nor a Sodomite of the sons of Israel Thou shall not bring the hire Of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both of these are abomination, are abomination unto the Lord thy God. The father said that whore in that video is an abomination and she dare use the term Jesus. The father said there'll be no whores and no sodomites in the house of Israel. You know what that means? It means death. It means destruction. It means you're dead. Now with that, I want to go to Proverbs chapter 6. Now, I read one part of this last week, but I did not read the verse above because I wanted to save it. So, Proverbs chapter 6. Go down to verse 24, please. And y'all will remember the part when we get to it that we read last week. But there's something that I wanted to keep for today. Watch this. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Do you sisters see that? 
The Most High just went ahead and called y'all out with those damn, those cum catchers. That's what those are. If you don't know, those long eyelids, that's what they, they use those in the porn industry. Those are cum catchers. So that when the man ejaculate on her face, it doesn't get her eye. And a lot of you thought that was a modern thing, huh? Nope. All the way back then, they were doing that. All the way back then, they had men skeeting on their face. And the uh, little eyelid umbrellas to catch it. Do y'all see how the Most High is? Do y'all see how the Most High don't play? Do you see how the Most High speaks? How he talks? This is why you have to have kings to bring this out with power. Not like those effeminate little faggot Christian pastors. This word don't belong to them. It belongs to the kings that are all about this truth. And we're going to bring it out with power. And that's what the father said. Spare no feelings. So if you sisters are out there, and quite frankly for you brothers, there's some brothers that's wearing it too. If you are wearing cum catches, you are already prophesied in the scripture for destruction. Get it off your bodies. You get mad at me all you want to. If you got it on right now, get it off. Verse 26. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. That's the part that we went over last week. So now, as you see, as we bring these things here together and you see these examples that we bring forth, now you can put all the pieces together and be like, yo, wow, OK, guess what? This brother's not lying. Guess what? They'll call me a lot of stuff. A lot of them, I mean, you know, a lot of people hate me. They can't stand me. And I love every bit of it. But. The one thing that they will never call me is a liar. I'm coming right out the book. And for anybody that has a problem with that, oh, well. Okay. Now, the next one. I want you to please go to Ezekiel chapter 16. The book of Ezekiel chapter 16. Let's go down to verse 30, please. The book of Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 30. All right, here we go. How weak is thine heart? Saith the Lord God, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, whorish woman. Now, a lot of you sisters may think that I'm emphasizing only on you. <laughs> I'm not. It's not all about you. But the father is making sure that you do understand that there's two places that you can be. You can either be a righteous queen or you can be an unrighteous whore. The choice is yours, whichever one you do. But the righteous queen will be seen in the kingdom and the evil, devilish, demonic, unrighteous whore is going to see fire. I'm telling you, and we better get up. We better make sure that we are getting our minds absolutely right. Now, I want to read this one more time. How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God. That's talking to the brothers. How weak is your heart? How much of a bitch nigga are you? Hmm? How much of a punk are you to actually entertain the idea of the whorish woman? How weak in thine heart, saith the Lord, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, whorish woman. Now, do you know why kings and princes, I'm talking to the young ones too. Do you know why you have a lot of these thirst trap, thotting ass females that are out there shaking their ass all over Instagram and whatever other forms of social media? You know why they do it? Do you know why? Do you know why they do it? Well, let me go ahead and give an example to all of Israel as to why these sisters do this. So without any further ado, family, here we go. That's what I'm on. What you on? I'm throwing this shit. Get me, get me. Huh? Get me. Hear me? Hear me? We ain't stretching these hoes. We ain't blessing these hoes. Bless Fuck you talking about. No rap cat. No rap cat. You hear me? <laughs> yes, yeah, sir.
We going for another round on this bitch. We going for another round on this bitch. I'm just being real. I'm just being real tonight. The reason why they do what they do is because of you. Let me tell you something. For that brother to bring all that money, <laughs> all of that money, into a strip club to waste it, while there are so many things out here in this world, first let's start with the poor. We can start with our family that's in need. And that's where that money is going. Do y'all see why the most high is piss? Kings, do you see the responsibility that we truly, truly have? Let me tell you something. If they were. Let me rephrase this. I want to make sure I say this correctly. They could not shake their ass in strip clubs if they didn't have any customers. Y'all understand that? I want to make sure that you clearly understand what I'm saying here. A lot of this here, Kings, is on us too because we give them the desire, we give them the ability to go out there and do what they do. I'm... Our people are beyond wicked. But a lot of people don't bring these types of things. A lot of people, they are very, very afraid. They're timid to show these particular images. And do you know why they do that? Because they don't want to see their reflection. A lot of camps, they don't bring this out. They don't, they don't touch this right here. Because they're guilty of it too. And I'm talking about niggas in the truth. I'm talking about niggas in fringes. I'm talking about niggas in head wraps the whole nine. And they did what you just saw. And they continue to do what you just saw. And then they go out and they try to, they try to have their lessons and sermons and they scream in the streets about our women being whores. And once again, I'm talking about these are brothers in the truth. All right. Now, with that being said, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 24, please. The book of Matthew chapter 24. I want you to go down to verse 35. And I'm going to bring this out here because I can't wait to wrap this to tie this one together. Oh, watch this. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So every word that was spoken from the beginning all the way until the end and forevermore will always be the same. But of that day 
an hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of no were, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that no entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. So Christ was making it very known. Wait a minute. The very same way that my father took out our black asses all the way back then. He's going to do it again soon. Very soon. And as you see what they were doing, it was always sitting there drinking. You know what they do in the clubs? Drinking, eating, partying on days they ain't supposed to be doing that. Worshiping these, these hella days as they call them. And the father said, oh, don't worry about that. I'm going to take them all out. Oh, them days are coming. And I read that for a reason. So, now I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I want you to please go down to verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, family. Woo! Watch this. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Don't let anybody deceive you. Nobody. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, meaning homosexuality, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, because that's the subject we're getting on next, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. The Most High just made it clear about the people that's not getting in. But there was that one right there, drunkards, family, drunkards. What did we just read in Matthew 24? The eating and drinking. The father told you. Christ told you. This drunkenness, this drunkenness. Let's go ahead and transition into that now. The drunkenness, family. Now... I want you to go stay in the book of first Corinthians. Go back one. I want you to go to chapter five and go to verse 11. And I want you to see this family. Watch this. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. I'm going to say that again, not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, and that's brother and sister, speaking in the male vernacular. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner with such one, show me, such and one, no, not to eat. What did the Most High tell his sons and daughters? You are not to keep company with all those things. But the one I want to pull up the most here is the drunkard. So now, let me give some a little example here. For you sisters, you know how you got either those friends or that one friend, the one that you call your bitch, her. How you know that she can get intoxicated. You know how her Friday night is going to be on Thursday. The father warned you. You cannot keep company with her. You can't. It is a sin. The very same thing goes for us kings. How we know we got that one brother we know or several brothers. The ones that just got to get tossed. The ones that got to throw back. The father warned us. We can't keep company with that nigga. Do you understand what the scripture said? Not me. Do you understand what the scripture said? 
So if you are a person that is entertaining this person, and especially during that time, you are just as guilty as they are. And the father told us we cannot keep company with those people. It is a sin. No different than what 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 told us. No games being played. None. No games. No games. So now let's go to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 21, please. The book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 21. Let's see what this says. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. How many times have we read that tonight? And do you know what all of this is, family? Lust. Because lust is not only sexual. Now, lust is you not wanting to give up alcohol. Lust is you like to be around people that drink and get tossed. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a drink, not a damn thing, nothing. But when you come to the point of lust to where you can't put the alcohol down to where you say, you know what? I'm purposely going out tonight to get drunk with my girls or with my homies or whatever the hell you call yourselves here today. That's lust. That's lust. And it's going to get you killed. It's going to get you burned. It is going to get you thrown into that pit. The father said you will not be inheriting the the kingdom of God. And if you do not inherit the kingdom of God as an Israelite, meaning a black, Hispanic, or Native American, you are dead. Lights out. Party's over. And we can't keep playing around with this. Them drunk niggas in your life, they gotta go. They have to go. Because that is is a sin the most high made it clear now let me ask y'all a question is there anything wrong with drinking because with everything there's balance it's balance now there's one thing going out there being a damn wino okay just being a slush but then there's also a time when you can actually drink and enjoy yourself. So now, we are going to get one of those circumstances. So please, family, I want you to go to John. The book, regular John. John chapter 2 and verse 1. The book of John chapter 2 and verse 1. You see, a lot of people, they'll go ahead and bring stuff like that out, but they won't deliver the balance that's along with it. Because there's nothing wrong with drinking. As a matter of fact, to drink wine, for all of us to drink wine, is actually a commandment. All right, now, we're going to tell this story. You've heard it before, but we are going to tell this story here how it should be told, how it should have been told for the first place. But you have these pastors that have absolutely, they, they, they have no charisma. They have, they, they have no idea what this says. I'll just put it as plain as that. Watch this. Let's get into the story. John chapter 2, verse 1. And the third day... There was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. All right. So let's break this down as we go through it. Here it's a wedding. A black wedding at that. And Mary, Jesus' mother, mom, Dukes, is at the wedding. Verse 2. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. So do y'all understand what this is saying here? First of all, Yahweh Shai and the disciples, they were called. They were invited. Now, you already know you don't invite anybody to anything, no party that you don't want there. Either because they're troublemakers or they're just whack. All right, wallflowers. So this is letting you know that Christ and the disciples, they got down. They had soul, they had spirit. Lives of the party, they were all invited. All right? Verse three, this is where it starts to get hilarious. And when they wanted wine, 
the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. So hold on a second. So now they're at the party. Everybody probably went ahead and had a nice little drink, nice little toast or whatever the case was. But Mary was like, hold on. They are, yo, where the wine at? <laughs> where the wine at? She's like, there's no wine. Now, mind you, Mary knows her son. <laughs> Watch this. Jesus saith unto her, woman, what have to do with thee? Mine hour is not come yet. So <laughs> Christ is making it known to Mary. He's like, hold on. Here's the scenario. Mary is like, oh, look, we don't, we don't got no more wine. We don't got no wine. And Jesus, and so, so she's like, Jesus, come in, come in, boy, come in. All right, now I already know what you do. I know what you do. All right, I'm going to need you to hook us up with some of that wine. Come on. And Jesus is like, hold on. He's like, well, hey, mom, come on. Why are you bothering me like that? Nah, it's not my time yet. Not yet. You Come on, fall back. Watch this. <laughs> His mother saith unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. All right, so now <laughs> Jesus is like, hold on, my yo, look, look. It's not my time yet. You already know what Mary said to him. She's like, boy, stop playing with me. Boy, you better stop playing with me. Look, there ain't no wine here. And I'm going to need you to do what you do. And I'm going to need you to go and take care of all this. As a matter of fact, you, you and you, come in. You know how you know how black mothers, blacks and Hispanic mothers are. Yep, y'all come in. Come in. Look, look. Do whatever he's telling you to do. All right? We don't got no wine here, so Jesus, stop playing with me. Get that wine going, boy. That's what's going on. And Christ is like, all right, my, all right, man. Go ahead. All right, all right, I got you. Watch. It's going to prove it. I'm going to read it again. His mother saith unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. So that's the black mother right there being bossy because she want that wine. She, she, Mary know what's up. And there were set. There are six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three first skins apiece. Now, do you know what a first skin is? It's a barrel. So I want you to think about this here. How many bottles of alcohol can you really fill up with one barrel? One barrel. Let's see. Two or three first skins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. So Christ is like, all right, here it is. I got, I got everything all filled up. All right, hold on a second. Mm. All right, go ahead and taste it. Now, draw it out and go take some to the governor of the feast, the person that's hosting the party. So in other words, Christ was making sure that the person that threw the party, that he went ahead and got his, that just goes to show you the type of respectful man that Christ was. Verse nine, when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom. So he so he went ahead. The host of the party got he got a taste of the wine. He got a taste of the wine, right? Watch this. And saith unto him. First he called the bridegroom. He like, he was like, nigga, come here, come here, come here. And saith unto him, every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. So this is letting you know that they were already drinking when they first got there. So he said, yo, everybody, yo, everybody bought some good stuff, yo. Everybody bought them good bottles. They bought them good bottles. You know what I'm saying? Let's say somebody bought some real, some, some, I don't want to say, Dom P, all right? They had the Dom P out for everybody. And I'm going to start this again. And saith unto him, every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but, but thou has kept the good wine until now. So hold on a second. So the host of the party was like, yo, hold on, yo. All right, well, we had that good wine over here, but yo, who bought this? Oh my, little, mm. who bought this? Who bought this shit right here? 
Whoever this is, come in so I can so I, I can give you a pound. That's what's going on right now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. So Christ went out and put out that good, good. Christ put out the good, good through who? Through his mother that was not playing with him. And they even called the host over and the host was like, yo, who did this? Those are black people. Those are Hispanics. Those are Native Americans. That's how we get down. That's how we get down. This is our book. These are our stories. Straight up 100%. Yep. But do you see how they were all sitting there drinking and nobody was sinning? No sin. Just our people partying. No lust. And I wanted to make sure that I brought that out to y'all because I wanted you to see that there is a difference. There is a balance. So now I want you to take a look at something here real fast. Look at this. Fam, do y'all see that right here? You know what this is? This is a liver. Cirrhosis. This is what it looks like when you drink too much. You are destroying your liver. It's called cirrhosis. King Marcus, I'm hope I'm I hope I'm making you proud, brother. <laughs> I, this is your field, bro. But I know a little something, something. I can't do it like you, but I know a little something, no. Cirrhosis, family. From lusting over alcohol, damaging your liver. Now, with that being said, family, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. I want you to pay very close attention to this. If any man defile the temple of God, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. The father said, you are the temple of the most high. So when you destroy your temple, when you purposely drink too much and you cause cirrhosis of the liver, guess where you're headed to? You're headed straight to hell. And I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking about the lake of fire. That's not hell. I'm talking about everything that it takes to get there. And if you don't repent from it, guess what's going to happen? At that point, you're going to burn in the lake of fire. Now, I want you to go, stay in uh, 1 Corinthians, go to chapter 6 and jump down to verse 19, please. Okay, I want to make sure that we continue with your body, your temple. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? which ye have of God and ye are not your own. Your body does not belong to you. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So when you decide that you want to be a drunkard, when you want to get out and get hammered, get smashed, get slushy, you want to continue doing that, the father, he's going to kill you. That's why you cannot keep company with those particular people because they are going to die. According to the most high. I didn't say it. It's not my opinion. The father said this. He said it. Now, there's another one. That comes up all the time. You see, the alcohol affects the liver. Now you have these brothers and sisters that just like to... <laughs> they let that smoke. Smoking weed. Cigarettes. Tobacco. Vaping. 
hookahs, any of these things. Any of them. And I know I done reached my hand into a lot of households tonight and just slapped you on top of your damn head. You cannot inhale smoke into your body. Why? Let's take a look. Do you see this? On the left here, you have healthy lungs. On the right here, you have unhealthy lungs. Do you see what you've done to your body with the smoke? Why? Because first and foremost, smoke has carcinogens. First and foremost, they cause cancer. And secondly, they destroy your lungs. They destroy your lungs. Smoking weed or any substance, anything at all, is lust. It's the lust of smoking. Now, people do it for several reasons. First and foremost, let's go ahead. I want you to go to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. The book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. A lot of people smoke weed to escape their problems temporarily. They put their brain into a sense of euphoria. This is why they do it with weed. They do it with cigarettes. They do it with vaping. They do it with whatever, hookah, whatever it is. Whatever that you smoke. Some people even smoke damn Epsom salt, bath salts, or whatever it is. Crack, whatever it is. Drugs, whatever. Be sober. 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 You can't escape your mind like that. It's a sin. Be sober, be vigilant, because because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Let me ask you a question. This here is said right here. Because your adversary, your enemy, that's Esau. How many of our people were arrested for smoking weed? Taken in custody by white cops. Yep. Yep. That scripture rings true. See, a lot of people, when they read that, they think that it's all about bloodshed. It's not. Your enemy came after you for the things that you did. But guess what? You put yourself in that position. You did. Judgment. Do you see how every facet of this of these scriptures, the father will make sure that Esau is there? Remember, Esau is the whipping rod to Israel because we are a disobedient, stiff-necked people. So now, there's a balance. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 9 and verse 3. The book of Genesis chapter 9 and verse 3. Watch this. Now, first and foremost, King Marcus just brought this out not that long ago in his lessons. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. The green herb. Now, we all know that weed, marijuana, whatever you want to call it, cannabis is green. So is there anything wrong with marijuana? No, there isn't. But when you take it and you put it through a process to where you smoke it and you can get a state of euphoria from it, then that's where the problem comes. First of all, you cannot smoke. And secondly, you have to remain sober. But eating marijuana, eating it, definitely has its health benefits. Now, y'all going to have to talk to King Marcus more about that because that's more his field. He's the expert on that type of stuff. But I'm just letting you know that it does. So now I want you to go now to go back to Genesis chapter one. And I want you to go down to uh, verse 29. Genesis chapter one, verse 29. I'm going to read this here for you. And God said, behold, I have given you Every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in the which 
is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you, shall it be for meat. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the six days. So I want to show y'all, I wanted to show you that eating it is not an issue. I don't give a damn what your, what your personal stance or whatever it is on there. The scripture said that you can eat it. You can eat it. Now, if you eat too much of it, guess what's going to happen? A state of euphoria, possibly. But do you know I have had arguments with the weed smokers? Do you know what somebody actually tried to use as an argument? I'm being dead serious. I cannot make this up. From my mouth to the most high's ears, this brother said, well, they were burning incense in the temples. I said, nigga, are you serious? I mean, I, I, at that point, I, I, just, I said, nigga, are you serious? Are you being for real? And he was like, yeah. I said, I want you to explain to me how inhaling an aroma versus smoking it and putting it into your body in a large consumption is different. I said, that would be no different than smelling the aroma of food. How is it any different, you idiot? And of course, there was no response after that. But he really tried me. He really did. He really, really tried me. But as I wanted to show you there, that there is a balance between the two. You can either have too much of it or you can use it for what it truly, truly is used for. Medicinal purposes. And don't come to me with that cataracts nonsense either. You was blind so long ago. All right. So now, as a matter of fact, I'm going to jump back to this one more time. I want to nail this. I want to put the, the nail in this in that coffin there. I want you to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. And I want you to read this here one more time. And as a matter of fact, I want everybody to read this one out loud. If you at home, everybody need to be reading this out loud so we can put this put this up in, into the air. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple are ye are. Which temple ye are. You are the temple of God. Because you are a God. All praises to the Most High. Now, family. This is the one I've been waiting for. I want to introduce to you a lust that so many of our people have no idea that they are committing. First, scripture. I want you to please go to the book of Exodus chapter 22 and verse 18. The book of Exodus chapter 22 and verse 18. <laughs> Thou shall not suffer a witch to live. What is a witch involved in family? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. And we are, whoa, we're about to get so deep into this one here. I'm going to read that one more time. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Family. Oh, family. The father said, kill the witches. Oh, we're about to get into some things here right now. Oh, my Lord. Now, what I got to do, family, I have to get you the definition, the biblical description of what witch craft is oh so many of your minds are gonna be blown away some of you are going to be flabbergasted <laughs> i've been doing that who watch this to understand witchcraft there is something that you must know how to do a lot of us have casted spells and not even known it didn't even know didn't even realize because to know witchcraft 
you would have to know what manipulation is. Watch this. What is manipulation? To manage or utilize skillfully to control or play upon by artful, unfair, or insidious means, especially to one's own advantage. To change by artful or unfair means as to serve one's purpose is a form of witchcraft. I suffer not a witch to live. Let's continue. Witchcraft defined. Witchcraft is a counterfeit spiritual authority. It is using a spirit other than the Holy Spirit to dominate, manipulate, or control others. Any authority or influence that we gain by our own manipulation for self-promotion will be a stumbling block to us and will hinder our ability to receive true authority from God. Oh, no, 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 no. It's his verse. First of all, do you understand what perjury is? Yes, I even understand perjury what perjury is. is. A lie. I no, know what perjury means. That courtroom up in Flint, it got heated. The woman you saw there said her date was so bad with the defendant, she decided to sue him for thousands of dollars and then thought it was a good idea to represent herself in courts. I feel for the defendant. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, like I said, it, it, he should have swiped left. Too late now for Richard Jordan, who's being sued for $10,000 after he allegedly didn't show up for a date with Kashante Short back in 2020 in Flint. She says he caused emotional distress because the date fell on her late mom's birthday. Mr. Jordan, let me just ask you this. Are you planning to uh, represent yourself on this? Uh, I, I, I... To be honest with you, sir, I, I, I thought this was just going to be thrown out. Uh, it was we had a date, one date and nothing else after that. And now I'm being sued for ten thousand dollars. Todd, you've been doing this a minute. Ever seen anything like this? Um, if I've seen something like this, I've seen someone go to jail. Defense attorney Todd Perkins wasn't in on this hearing, but says the judge has the patience of a saint as Miss Short tried schooling him on everything during this recent Zoom hearing. Do not insult my intelligence as if I do not understand what the word perjury means. Be quiet while I'm talking. You need to be, be quiet. Mute. Can because you mute her, please? Because mute. perjury is a Can criminal offense. She's walking through an airport. She's, uh, she's just, as the judge was muting her, she continued to talk. The best part, besides the look on this man's face, Miss Short didn't even file in the right court. Bottom line is you said it's a criminal offense, so I will send it to circuit court. Are we done here? No, no, you don't, you don't understand, ma'am. You don't Are understand. Are we done here? Are we done here? Like several other of Miss Short's bizarre lawsuits, this one too got booted from district court. And as for the alleged bad date guy, our hearts go out to him. You know, I, I think he's going to get some good dates off of his patience in dealing with this. So, you know, maybe he could use a bad moment for some good. Reporting in Flint, Jessica Dupnack, Fox 2 News. Ah, oh, goodness, we're about to dig into this one here, baby. Manipulation. A lot of our sisters are very, very guilty of this. Queens, do y'all know how? Queens, princesses, do y'all know how? You know how to manipulate? Huh? You know when you give your husband the cold shoulder? You know when there's something that you know that you are foul about and you conjure up this little scheme to piss off your husband? Do you know when there's something that you want to go out there and you have no business doing and you conjure up an argument just so that you can leave the house? All the little manipulating things 
that our sisters do that's called witchcraft. If you've done it before, you are considered a witch. If you've done anything to where you have finagled a circumstance or a situation to your own personal benefit, the Most High sees you as a witch. And he said you were supposed to die for that. Kings, do you know when you have finagled a situation or a circumstance? How you went ahead and you started an argument and you did something to that woman or a brother or a sister, anybody, any situation. It has nothing. It doesn't just fall on romance it's by itself, but on all things. You, my brother, are considered a male witch. And the Bible has a term for that. So now I want us to go to Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 31. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 31, baby. Watch this. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards. That's the man witch. To be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Did you see what the Most High said? That we do. When we manipulate, we defile. Defile family. So you know what comes when we defile? What did the Father say he was going to do if we defile our temples? You see, now with this, you're not defiling your temple. You are defiling others. What comes? That lake of fire. The lake of fire. Manipulation. Manipulation, family. Now I want you to go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18. Let's go down to verse 9. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9, family. Ooh, watch this. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire or that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. Woo, there were so many things right there. Number one, divination. You know what that means? That means going to talk to somebody that speaks to the dead. Somebody that says, you know what? I'm a spiritual person. No, I don't believe in that Bible. Get that Bible away from me. <laughs> but I'm a spiritual person. That's divination. Or an observer of times, a fortune teller. Because a lot of you have had your palms read before and somebody sitting there telling you about what your future is going to be like or an enchanter do you know what an enchanter is a person that loves to delve deep into the horoscopes your ass is going to die i'm telling y'all right now for those people that like to do that because there was a couple of people that like they wanted to bring up the thing with capricorns and and all that crap with me i said don't play with me i'll cut them off I cut them off because the Most High considers them a witch. Or a witch, or a charmer, or a consultant with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. The Father said, get out of my face, you're dead. Uh-huh. You're dead. You're dead, family. You're dead. These manipulators, these enchanters, those who read horoscopes, all those things, the father said, you're going to die. You're going to die. Now, let's go to the book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 7. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 27, not 7, 27, verse 27. Forgive me. Look at this. 
A man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. Do y'all understand now why Christ is so important? Just like I showed last week. If Christ did not come for the salvation of our people, we would be dead by now. Y'all understand that? Do you see the mercy that the Most High has had on us? Do you see the mercy that your black ass received from the Most High? And yet, we don't want to keep his commandments. Do you see and understand why? With all of the lust that we do in his face, that he looks down and looks at his children and be like, these are the ones that I chose. Seriously, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves, family. Got one more. I want you to go to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19, please. The book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Watch this. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do so shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We started off with that last week and we're ending with it this week. Cinch up that two-part lesson. So let's go ahead and call this what it is. Guess what, family? We deal with a lot of lust. We can't be whores, male or female. We can't lust after anything. If we do, we're dead. If we do, we're dead. I want to make sure that that is as plain as possible to be said. If we don't, we're dead. The father made it clear. Remember in these scriptures, it says that he not only is a loving God, he's not a merciful God. He is a terrible God. Terrible. He is not a merciful God on those people that choose to continue to sin, who continues to lust. He said he is going to destroy. The father said he's all about that blood. He's all about that blood. Not only the father, but also his son. They said they're coming for blood. They're coming to whoop ass. They're coming to kick ass and take no names. They're just coming to kick all the ass on this planet. All the unrighteous ass. Family, we got to stop playing with the father. This <laughs> Time is too short. Time is too short. Entirely too short. And if we continue to play with him, you know what's going to get you? It's going to be death. No more manipulating your husbands. No more manipulating your wives. This is our time to come together and truly, truly love one another family. We have to. You're a God. You have the ability to do it. All these things that we just went over here tonight, I really, really hope that you took heed to what was being said. Straight up. And even as of last week, the time is drawing near. The time that Christ spoke about in Matthew, the time that's coming. The family, it's not just coming, it's already here. We're seeing the signs all over the place. Non-stop chariot sightings, non-stop, non-stop. The whoredom on the land, the judgment of our people. Our people have been dropping like flies, just dropping. 
You know what's going to happen any minute? Boom. The boom is going to occur. And them chariots are coming through with fire. And when they do, where will you be? On what side? Righteousness or unrighteousness? Did you follow the will of the most high or did you follow after your lust? This hand will live forever, but this hand will burn forever. Now it's up to you, whichever, one, whichever hand you want to be in is up to you. The choice is yours.